So, clarification, it's not my call. Pingu should be standing here. Uh, he has some virus. He didn't want to uh, spread it around. So, I received the whole transcript yesterday. I tried to learn it. If you ask me a question, there is Nils and Michal, and I will throw it back at them, and they should know what this is actually about. I know some things about the testing side, because that's when I got in, uh, but let's get to it. I am talking about uh, gating row height, and this is the talk where we announced that, yay, we have it running somewhere. So, agenda. First, why we want to gate row height and what were the challenges? If anybody saw Pingu's talk on previous flock, I think, these are the two things he already talked about. Uh, then I will talk about what actually is, let's say, live, what we've done. Uh, maybe some hints about how to interact with it when we, you need to suddenly debug because it's stuck somewhere and you actually want to use it. Uh, and some roadmap because, of course, it's software, so it's never done. And last but not least, Pingu has a surprise for you. So, why gating raw height? Primary reason we want to have more stable raw height. So, we want to have something automated when you want to push a new package new update that checks it didn't really break uh, anything. So it should have many advantages. It should give us working composes and composes not being broken that often. And hopefully faster uh, updates when we are actually doing release. And uh, one thing we would actually want to achieve with it is if we uh, manage to implement it correctly, it shouldn't happen to you anymore that you are maintaining your package and somebody broke one of your dependencies and it's your problem. So we would move to, you broke it, you fix it, you coordinate, you tell the people downstream that, hey, I'm doing this update, I don't know, I'm doing a soname bump, we need to figure this together instead of just pushing an update and let all of the others deal with it. Like that's not something that we really have yet, but we are moving to that. So where were the challenges? First biggest challenge Wei Pingu told me is we actually attempted to do something like that a few years ago and we didn't manage. He didn't tell more of the story, so I don't know what were the problems in the previous iteration. Uh, second, no uh, big sweeping changes to the update system. We definitely don't want to man maintain like a, I don't know, rawhide specific body or something just to have this gating feature. Uh, third, interrupt as little as possible our packagers. Uh, like there would be some changes to packager workflow because we are adding this new feature, but have it fit into the existing tooling and uh, limit what they need to learn, etc. And uh, last but not least, uh, of course, we built this new testing tool for the packages. And then our testing tool fails and the packagers suffer because they can't get the update in. So there needs to be some sort of escape hatch. If that happens or if you just know you need to push this, there is a way uh, how to wave the test results to ignore them. So this was the plan. Uh, we need both single build update testing and multi-build update testing, and we would phase it in a, in a phased rollout. And then we would be able to gather feedback instead of doing like a big bang release. And we uh, really wanted to have a good user experience once we go 
forwards with this. That's something I shouldn't ask in the questions to you guys, if uh, those of you who actually had to interact with it, like what was your experience? So we actually have it running uh, now. It has been deployed on uh, body and staging and production for a few weeks. Uh, and you now can uh, see that uh, builds are gated in raw, raw height, both for single and multi builds. So, how does this work? Uh, let's first look at the single build. And this thing is just to scare you off. You don't need to really pay attention. Uh, it mostly says, is to signify that, oh, look how many systems we need to touch to do the updates. Uh, like, oh, this part is the testing part. And tomorrow morning, there is actually a talk just about the Result DB, Greenway, ABate, and Waiver DB the parts that actually do the testing. So let's look at a simplified uh, flow where you see just the thing that actually happens. This is a simplified uh, implementation. Uh, we, we actually, in the end, went with something a bit different once we had the multi-built uh, gating because we wanted to have them fairly similar. So uh, once you uh, kick off your build, uh, the build is tagged with updates candidate, uh, then it waits to be signed, uh, then it gets re-tagged uh, updates pending, and that's kind of the sign that, all right, now we are waiting for the test, then the CI system notices uh, to make it clear. If you look at this column that is like populated with all of the stuff, this is actually Fedora messaging and all of the messages that are sent back and forth to actually facilitate the thing. Uh, Pingu told me he will share the full resolution, so I think once this gets published, you should be able to study it in detail and tell us when we have like weird stuff in it. Uh, so Bodhi then queries uh, GreenWave uh, to see how the testing went, and if it passed, it can let package to stable rawhide, or it will gate it. So, does that make sense? Okay, it looks, at, at least to Nils, who's one of the people who <laughs> built it, it makes sense, that's good. So, multi-build, uh, let's start with the same horrible image. Uh, there are kind of two things. The way we try to solve multi-builds is we are using side tags in uh, Koji, so in the beginning, there's like the part that deals with side tags and in the end as well. Uh, so this is the simplified thing. So first you would have to create a side tag and then you build all of the packages that have to go together in one uh, update in the side tag at once you are happy with everything being built, you can tell Bodhi, all right, this thing, this side tag, that's my update. Uh, run with it. And then uh, Koji will uh, tag the site tag uh, for, to, to, for RoboSignatory to know that it should sign the packages. And after that, it gets re-tagged with testing pending. And that's how Bodhi knows, all right, now we are handing it off to the CI system. And Bodhi queries again the, the CI to know how well it went. Uh, 
So this is probably the most significant thing because you just create a side tag. And from what I understand, this haven't really been the case. If you wanted to have a large update, there was a fairly uh, involved process to have side tags, so only the largest of projects use them. But uh, we worked with uh, Upstream Koji to simplify the side tag creation so that we can actually use them for this process which we want to be running uh, quite often. Uh, one of the things you might have noticed in the uh, previous slide, that we are then creating update in Bodhi. That's something we didn't need to do for the single package because it's just a single package. So Bodhi can just know that it should uh, cre like continue with the build, but uh, that's something we needed to change. So. Now the process for the single build and multi build is more similar. Okay. Uh, like if you don't want to go to the tomorrow talk about green wave, etc., uh, this is kind of a high level uh, overview of what actually happens when the tests are running. Uh, if I remember correctly, currently the CI systems is mostly the CentOS CI. Uh, we update the re upload the results to the results DB, and then GreenWave is the service that can check what was the result of the actual test for the update, or if we don't care and if we just want to waive it because. I don't know, some part of the system might, might be broken or, or we really need to push the update or something. Like you, you need the specific permission to be able to wait, just wait uh, uh, the test results, but it's there and that's what the green wave is for. And there is even a like CLI command for that. You can do Bodhi updates wave in Bodhi uh, CLI. So uh, now if something gets stuck, what can you do? Like you created your update, how do you know what is actually happening? As uh, you uh, saw in the, let me go back here, as, as you can see, like the biggest state change that happens that is visible are the tag changes. So if you list uh, the tags on your build, then you can see if uh, it is waiting on body, or it, if it is waiting to be signed, or if it is waiting to be tested. Uh, there is one more tag, it's just update-testing, which means that tests are in progress. So once you list all of the tags, you can at least see where it is stuck currently. Or it might not even be stuck. The test just might be taking too long. But it is at least uh, some sort of a, mm, signifier like, all right, where are we at? If you start writing uh, somebody on IRC, hey, my uh, build is stuck, or something like that. Uh, another interesting thing is that because we are relying so heavily on uh, the Fedora messaging system, uh, we, not we, like oh, you could try to massage the thing forward. So if 
you created your update and nothing happens and you list your tags and there are none, you could try to tag it manually and once you create for the single package the uh, updates candidate tag, the message should be sent and somebody should pick it up and that should kick off the whole process even if in the beginning something failed and wouldn't work. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that won't work with all the, of the text just No, the just, text. yeah, this, this would work only if you see there are no tags and maybe I will try to kick it off manually. So if you uh, would just tag it randomly with some of the tags further, it wouldn't work because it, ex for example, uh, for updates testing, it expects there are signed packages. So if there are no signed packages, giving it the tag wouldn't help. But if something happened and the first tag is not even created, then doing that manually might help. So, so you can uh, you can basically yeah this is what yeah the second part is uh, if you have multi bit built you are looking at the site tag because with uh, multi builds you're not just tagging packages you are for like each step you are creating entire new site tag to either to wait for to be signed or to wait for the testing to finish. So this is actually happening in the site tags. Okay. Uh, in theory, you could actually check this uh, in Bodhi as well. Uh, there is a little spinner in your like update UI and if everything works correctly it connects to the green wave to see what is the status and so there are basically three states currently we display either it's pending which means it didn't go through the robo signature yet or testing which means it's in the testing part of the whole process and tests are being uh, running or the test finished and it's being gated and there is a little results tab where you can see how the test look and finally if everything went well you can see that the update is stable. So we had to change some things based on the user feedback. Once we uh, when we did some of them were with the release of the new UI in Bodhi 5, because it seems we inadvertently broke some uh, people's workflows. Uh, uh, for example, we added querying to Koji so that you don't need to uh, copy paste all of the builds you want in your update. But it, it turns out there are many people that have good reasons why they want to copy paste the list of all of, the up, all of their updates. So uh, we added that back in. Uh, you need to have that list like uh, space separated, but it should work. Uh, more or less as previously. Uh, there are still some performance issues with Koji, especially with the, when we do the querying, because we always ask, like, what is the state? So if Koji is busy, then it doesn't really show up in Bodhi because Bodhi is doing the query. Uh, another thing was, um, for every single build in uh, raw height update, if you are a maintainer, you would receive like three to five emails, which to, for most people well, was too much. So 
we are trying to reduce it. Uh, if you still feel you are receiving too many emails for your packages, uh, just let us know. We might try harder. Uh, yes, uh, and the last thing. Is there a way how to get an email if I, for example, QE only and not a maintainer who built a package? And I would like to receive the uh, email. How it went actually? Because. I don't know. You could try to listen on it. But uh, we, we could discuss this later on. I know some other Q, QE people are in the audience. So if this is something you it, that would make your life easier, uh, we could look into if it's in our bandwidth to implement it. Uh, yeah, one more thing. We, we had, for some reason, we have uh, for a long time a request for enhancements so that once the update is stable, nobody should be able to comment on it anymore. And then we realized that there are people whose workflows uh, rely on being able to still uh, comment and coordinate even if from our point of view, it looks like the work is done and you shouldn't be. So, uh, there is shout out to, is there uh, IRC Nick, Adam W here? Okay, so Pingu uh, tells you Merry Christmas. We reverted this because of you, so <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> So now, what we don't have yet, because as I said, never finished. Uh, we want to optimize for testing and reporting for results for groups. This is on the roadmap, and uh, previously we were focused more on the single build, so that for the single package, it looks kind of nice and feels nice. Uh, second, we want to have uh, better test suite for the stuff that actually is testing the packages. Uh, for example, uh, running RPM inspect is something that shouldn't be too far in the future. Uh, we still don't know like how will it work once we will have like large amount of builds at once, especially how uh, GreenWave will really handle it, because we were running the code for some time, but there wasn't like, there were no mass rebuilds or anything like that. Uh, what we would really like to add is the reverse dependency testing, which was one of the things I was talking about in the beginning, why we would actually want to do that. For example, once your package would uh, break your dependencies so that it's the problem of the person who broke the dependency for people like downstream of him and not uh, for all of the people who use it. Like, if you disagree, shout at us before we try to implement it, I guess. Uh, what? Do I have here? Mm. Yeah, uh, we are starting to discuss if we could enable some sort of either compose or distro level tests as well. And uh, because I'm not as familiar like how far any of these are, if you have better ideas on Sunday, there should be CI special interest group workshop. So there is where you can have your voice heard or ask us more questions. Uh, 
second part that this is actually I think I'm working on right now with Pingu is we are not as certain like how the thing actually works in production. So we are building a uh, canary testing suit, just a small suit so that we would always see for our really simple uh, dummy packages that we created that have almost no cont content, but just to see that these are able to go through all of the pipeline, that all of the uh, systems uh, communicate each other and respond. So sort of a really lightweight, happy path, end-to-end -end testing we could run in regular intervals. Uh, Pingu already uses this for debugging, but we want to go one step further and have it being run periodically and reporting so that we know before our packagers know once this thing is actually broken. Uh, second thing uh, is we'd like to improve the workflow for mass rebuilds. Uh, in the first iteration of our single build, uh, what happens is that in the end, we would be waiting, all right, the robo signatories sign our package. But if we would do like a mass rebuild, that could mean there are a lot of packages in waiting to be signed. And from the point of view of the user, it looks like nothing works and everything is stuck. Now, once we move the all right, create update relatively early in the process in Bodhi, Bodhi can become kind of this source of truth where you would see where in the process the thing is. So you can at least shout at us, it's stuck there and not just, it looks like nothing's happening. So with this, we could be able to trigger uh, mass rebuilds in a way that wouldn't be just horrible pain for everybody involved. But we are not yet sure what would be the impact, but it's something that is on our roadmap. So this will certainly not be done if we need to do like the next uh, mass rebuild. Uh, but we, it's something we really want to work on to solve. OK, so the surprise that uh, Pingu was talking about in the beginning was that you can do on-demand site apps. You might have noticed that during the multi-builds, we are creating site tags left and right. And the surprise is you can do this for stable releases, not only in raw height, which means that fat packet chain build should work in uh, stable releases, like with stable releases as well. The difference is that for Rawhide, the stable tag will be removed when the update goes stable. Uh, for stable release, site, site tag will be deleted once you create the update. So if you need to edit the update or you need to add a build, then you go the same way as you were used to before you had this available. OK. That was quick. I don't know what Pingu wanted to talk about for 30 more minutes. But if you have questions, uh, do ask. And uh, there are people in the audience that should be able to answer. I just say first, thank you very much. This has been so needed for so long. Um, a couple of questions. <coughs> Do you have any idea where, when you would get the reverse dependency testing? Because you say that you're um, expecting some protest. I, I think. 
think it can't come soon enough. Okay. So, so you heard the question. You answer. I will then repeat it for the microphone. Okay, so to, to repeat, the question was, all right, version depend, uh, reverse dependency testing can't come soon enough. When will we have it? And the answer is, we really need uh, everybody or most people using regular tests for just their packages first so that we can actually utilize that to create reverse uh, dependency testing that would actually make sense. I suspect for some people, the existence of reverse dependency testing would be an encouragement to add tests because if my tests will protect my package from somebody else's refill, yeah. that's a big advantage for me. That's an incentive for me to write that uh, but I, I think this is actually the sort of discussion that would be really great for the workshop for CI SIG. Yeah. No, I, I just want to really advertise it so that more people come. No, continue. Yeah. Okay, so just to reiterate, we are not actually being blocked on that. Uh, we still want to progress the reverse dependency testing, uh, even if there are like th there is no like full coverage or anything. But uh, we still uh, are counting on packager involvement, so that it actually makes sense. All right, Adam in the back. Okay, so I, I wonder if I, yeah, no, no, I wonder if I should just, uh, how many of you, like, you know your stuff, Nils said something, so if you, I just uh, uh, invite you over so that you can speak to the mic so that we have this saved for posteriority. Uh, okay, next question. Mm -hmm. And it happened that during the time somebody else built the package and then I couldn't match the uh, uh, 
a side effect because there were newer builds and I need to build it again. So instead of one build, we did three builds and so on. Is there a chance to consider something like locking or at least somewhere like if I fire a package build, it would help me to know that somebody there are competing builds. Or that the, that the package is going to be inside the or was already built inside the so it would prevent this rebuilds or builds and, and so on. Okay, uh, good point. Uh, question, is this a something that should be an issue in our GitHub? Or? Uh, I understand where this comes from, uh, but uh, on one hand, I, I want to highlight, like, uh, we really... Uh, Come closer, it, the microphone a, is here. With a multi-built uh, gating, we really, uh, like tease you, uh, t tempt you to put everything you do in one big site tag and just merge it as one thing. And then this thing is similar as uh, what you call feature branch development on the source code. So you, you create a huge branch with all the changes and of course it conflicts with the master when you try to put it there. So these conflicts, they're going to happen and so please, please do not use very many multi-build builds in one side tag unless you really, really need it. So the smaller the change you do, the better you make it for everyone. Don't over, over bundle things which you try to push through the gate because it's going to be complicated. But yeah, the locking mechanism should be a feature request for this whole system. So it's, I think uh, it could be implemented like w w when you do fed package request side tag for something. Uh, and try to sub submit new package to the site tag, it can say something like, you know this package is already in free open site tags and you are going to have a conflict. But but really, like it, it's important like, not to overuse this multi-package multi, multi -package feature. D don't, don't bundle too much, otherwise this lock-in mechanism will just, again, it, it will just stop you from doing your work and... and, and uh, the point is, like, if you are doing mass rebuild, there is, like, all distribution affected, so... For me, it's no problem to build my package, which I'm like I'm doing update. For me, it would not be a problem to create uh, the, or build it in the. But but mass rebuilds are different, and for mass rebuilds, you kind of uh, can can announce it, and you say like you know we do, we need mass rebuild today. Please don't do new builds until we have finished, and this is like a distro wide action. But if you start using the site tag for semi mass rebuilds without announcing it without collaborating with other people, then you get into this conflict situation. Yeah, it, and it's going to be painful. Yeah, but the problem is that there is no way to easily synchronize the activity because there was for Kamala mass rebuild and there was Ruby mass rebuild and like we, we just rebuild the packages which happens to be using extra providing extension for both uh, for languages. So, you mm -hmm. know, no, I'm, I'm not saying the feature you're requesting is a bad one. It's a good feature. <laughs> I, just, I just worried that people like get too excited about multi-package gate and then, then start to put the whole distribution into one, one tag and try to, to get it to get it through it. Like, we don't want that. And I've got uh, one fresh uh, like feedback because when I was uh, submitting the body update, I didn't know what is the status of the update. You said like there is... Now I, I see that pending means uh, signing the packages, but yeah. it's not obvious from the body, and I cannot see actually if if there is some progress in signing where it's stuck, if it will move every eventually forward and so on. So if there was possible to see like more details, like mm -hmm. if I saw like there is 50 packages already signed, and I'm waiting for the remaining 50 packages. I would probably be a calmer because I would know it's moving somewhere, but okay, that I sounds completely unaware. Like, what does it mean? What is the situation? Can I try? Maybe one one thing to add to the talk. So uh, you saw that there are like ten services, ten different services participating in the whole gating infrastructure. And when you work with this, and you have a feedback like, like this one. And you're unsure, like, to which service this feedback actually needs to to go, and like in this whole process, who's responsible for what? So we have a catch-all uh, backtracker, which is uh, in Pagor. It's uh, Fedora CI, Fedora Dash CI project, and uh, uh, there's a gen general sub project in Fedora CI project where you can file feedback like this, 
and then we reroute it to the project which is responsible for this whole thing. So if you're unsure where to file the issue regarding gating and CI, try this Fedora CI slash, gen uh, slash general at Pagor, and we find a way to, to retrieve it people. Okay, more questions? Mm. One more announcement. <laughs> awesome. So uh, Go ahead. you saw this gating process is what happens after you build the package, uh, after you merge and, and submit a build, and it already goes half of the way there. And we know that sometimes it's very uh, annoying to like have your package fully pack uh, fully done uh, with all the version bumps. You submit the build, this build uh, then fails the test, and you need to go all the way back and do, redo the whole thing from, from, from beginning. So to ease this thing, there is another possibility to run tests on your packages, which is pull request testing. And today, in this same room, there will be Zool talk by Fabian, uh, who will tell you how you can actually test packages before you merge them into master and before you do a full uh, process for this package, but like get your feedback early so you can easily uh, change something in the package before it goes through, through everything. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> awesome. uh, in that case, any more announcements? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there are no more questions and no more announcements, there is no reason to not let you go for a coffee. So. Thank you for your attention. I again apologize for Pingu not being here, but he sends his uh, regards and hopefully should get well soon.